happening folks massey dave here thanks for watching somebody said in the comment the other day do a comparison between that and that 1979 massey 1200 1981 massey 1250 they both look the same ish other than that's got its work clothes on but i've worked a bit of magic on it over the, the other year or so uh anyway yeah i got into these when I moved to the current workshop I'm in, which was 10 years ago, uh, my landlord had one. So I thought, I want one of those. He wanted to sell it, so I went off on a whim and bought one, which you probably saw in the video the other day when I started everything up. Uh, and then along the way, I bought some more, and some more, and then I got that, and I got another one of these up restored, and we've done one for somebody else. Anyway, bit of a bug. I might be mad. I've got a good member of staff called Apprentice. She knows what she's doing. And we have the cleaner come down, tidy up our mess. So anyway, we will um, we'll do a walk round of these in a minute and compare the two, and I'll try and fill you some of my useless knowledge of these things. So uh, on that note, we will have a look round. Right. Well, there we go. We'll start with the uh, the 1250. Uh, no, that's the 1250. We'll start with the 1200. Uh, yeah, this one was advertised quietly some time ago, and I bought it and got a friend to. Uh, pick it up from somewhere in north wales way i think as you can see it's original untouched off farm condition you might say use it yeah you've seen it in other videos i got the uh, thingy on the back there for doing these schools but unfortunately they leave all their stuff in the way anyway these were built back designed in the early 70s uh designed in america for the uk market and they were built in uh, Barden Dock Road in Manchester. 188 back end. Sent there was a skid unit from Coventry. And the rest was cutting edge engineering at the time. CNC technology. Back in the 70s. Yeah, they're a pain in the ass to work on. But I think I've made a rod from my own back with the following we've got now. And um, yeah, this one, I say 1979. So it should be on the uh, Mark II gearbox multi-power on the 16.934 wheels as you can see there it's it's straight unmolested other than the uh, the rear light arms there which that's as it was when it came in haven't touched it hydraulics work brakes work i've given it a service given it a bit of tlc but uh, yeah i say it's got the Perkins 6354 engine in there, 105 horsepower. Some of them come out the factory, well, they all come out the factory without a turbo, and then an aftermarket was put on with a turbo, which I've seen a few. So, uh, yeah, let's have a look inside the cab. Nice straight steps. Stay away to heaven, you might say. But, uh, yeah, so I put a new sight glass in because they do go a bit rather discoloured and you can't see. But, yeah, this one gets used few cobwebs seat original used all intact obviously heater switch was replaced at some time because it broke but everything works as it should hydraulics up and down windscreen wipers lights a little bit iffy at the moment but you can tell it's a later one because it has got the long handbrake lever but yeah three speed reverse second third high and low and the multi-power so uh, yeah let's uh, let's fire her up oh obviously very neutral let's see pretty good oil pressure starts runs could do there a good clean again but uh, yeah it does the job you see the hydraulics are lifted up in the air so yeah it's clean and original I say these are a pain in the ass to work on. If you gotta do a clutch, you gotta go down through the floor. Not an easy job. Uh, but yeah, I've done them. I know these things inside and out. And yeah, they're just special. There was approximately 2,200 of these made back in the day. And this one is uh I say 50 from the end of production of these. There we go. The original 6354. Perkins engine. I don't know you can make it out there. The serial number stamped there. 902008, I think it is. 
so yeah a late one but usual thing that pulley and shaft in there can be the bane of this uh, this tractor but obviously somebody's been in here some time ago because they had the foresaw to put an extra set of belts in there so yeah it has had work done but i haven't touched anything in there but yeah pretty well original untouched i say 105 horsepower is standard on that um yeah gearbox in there that should say should be the late mark ii multi-power transmission not the crash box um yeah you got what's your front axle under there and your oil filter for the hydraulics and the spool valve that side but yeah nothing much in the way of oil leaks on this there is a small diesel leak on the injector pump but i ain't too worried about that as you say good clean tires all round. um battery box in there should have two batteries but this one's only got one because it starts on the button usual thing with these obviously the later one you have an extension tube there for oil filling which um they did a slight upgrade to get more oil in it so they put that angle filler on and to make it easier to uh fill it up because usually it was just in the plug in there uh, but yeah i do try and keep it greased yes the usual suspect oil leak on the pivot but it's an old girl uh, yeah obviously missing them work lights but pretty complete i say it gets used and it works but yeah one of, one in the one of my collection but i say this uh, clean original off farm condition you don't see too many like this these days a lot of them were butchered and lengthened uh say still with the original glass in it so yeah one of me uh, me pension funds so anyway we'll move on to that one next the 1250 so anyway when they finished producing these they were changing over to the 1250 because some of the linkage on the back of that is identical to that on the assist ram part on the top uh the early 1200s they had it's almost like flat bar and a piece of box for the assist ram the later ones they changed it to uh, a slightly beefier ram and the rather than flat bars it went to a rain rod with prop rod with proper clevises on the ends of it which in one of the previous videos of the 1250 we're doing uh, i had to cut them apart to get the pins out but it's repaired salvaged because some of that stuff you just can't buy anymore so yeah the 1250 produced uh 1980 once they uh stopped building these things behind me they did do upgrades they changed the drive between the engine and the gearbox still got the same gearbox in this as the one behind me the mark ii constant mesh gearbox not the early ones which had the crash box in it but a significant difference is they changed the axles the reductions there on the hub a lot bigger compared to those inside the drop box they changed the gears in there to allow for the bigger reductions same size reduction box uh, drop box but they changed it you take it apart a completely different way anyway when i got this one well as my uncle told me to buy it and he told me to buy the other one shortly before he died but um yeah had a trip up loaded it up it had been butchered quite a lot it had the hydraulic pumps in the mounted on the front here and it was missing a gearbox managed to get one thankfully so this one is back to as original spec but yeah, if you can imagine I'll, just, I'll take the covers off a minute the two hydraulic pumps in there one was mounted here running off the crank and one the other side and all the filter housings bolted on the outside here it looked a right state but time patience perseverance and a very deep pocket and a very long arm i've got it back to as it was yes there's some refinements done on it but predominantly aesthetically looking other than the stickers they look virtually identical cab wise yes fit and finish aside was a bit different the hydraulics are beefed up a little bit different gears in the drop box to allow for the the bigger axles and reductions on there 
uh, I say link arms, pretty well the same as what's on that. These are all different, as in the lift rods, because these are fully adjustable, whereas the other ones you've still got the leveling box. But the uh, the bits inside there, which I say on a previous video, these are identical on the top to that one, because that's a late one. But yeah, a lot of stuff I had to make for this, make all these, make the PTO guard, which I was making some this morning, which will probably be in a previous video, because I'm not going to put this one up for a few days. Uh, but yeah, I've made a lot of stuff, and people ring me up for a lot of stuff. But I've only got one pair of hands, and I can only do what I can do. But yeah, they're lovely. And I say, they only made uh, 232 of these ever made. And I've got two of them, and we're doing one at the moment, and I've got another one waiting to do. And I've got people waiting to have theirs done. So if you've got one of these, you could say you're in a bit of an elite club, because there aren't many. And of what was made, there aren't that many left. I don't know how many are left, probably 200. Uh, best guess? I don't know. Not something I've ever uh, actually found a true number out yet until everybody crawls out the woodwork and says, I've got one, I've got one. I know some went to Australia, New Zealand, uh, not New Zealand, uh, Tasmania. Uh, quite a few went to, uh, I think it was some went to Sudan. I've got a friend, Graham, he's done the rounds with them and knows where quite a few went. But yeah, I've seen a few about and I know where a few are. But yes, the front grille, they changed it slightly. 1250's got a nice little badge on there, which uh, Apprentice did a very good job of tidying that up. But other than that, pretty original as far as everything. Yes, I've made bits, but from something that was a bit of a state when I got it, it does look good now. And that one there, work close. It works. So we're going to have a look in the cab on this one. Again, all the same. Stay away to heaven. Yeah, same size fuel tank. They put padding in here on the cab. Bit of sound deadening. Slightly different floor mat. They got a, I think it's pretty much like this, which is a um, checker plate rubber. These have got thick rubber um, mats on here, whereas the, the plastic liners. But yeah seat a lot better seat i'll see uh, ladies next door recovered this for me in the closest material we could find to what was original um yeah roof lining it's all of it embossed perforated and the same with the side panels here that was all done obviously i've had to have these made as um they, they were like a heat embossed pattern but these they stitched them in for me so they look pretty close to uh, what they should be and again, on the door card, the 1250s, had an MF logo embossed in there. But yeah, it's it's nice. It's a privilege to own one. Again, yes, yeah, some people might say, you know, you've got BKTs on. The other one at the workshop, the other 1250, I've got Seats on. End of the day, it's the right size tyre. Tread looks nice. Not that I'm going to use this in anger. But it's just a thing of red beauty. Again, pain in the ass to work on if you've got to do anything major. But from what we've done over the years, I like to keep things original. I'm not a fan of shiny stainless steel exhaust pipes. It's just, it's not original. Just like to keep them looking as they were when they were made. But yeah, say hydraulics, on this one are totally different to that one. How this lot's plumbed up, you've got your gearbox, oil, which does your steering, your multi-power. And then the other pump with a separate tank, which is in behind there, which you fill up from there, does your auxiliary hydraulics. Then on the back, you've got a supply coming from the, you've got your yoke pump in there, which does your left arms. And there's another pump little kidney pump which does the supply for the PTO valve and then it goes forward to do your diff lock. On this one, totally different. You have a separate oil tank in there. I'll take this off in a minute. A separate oil tank there. The steering is on its own dedicated circuit. Steering alone, that's it. Still the same pump, the same side. 
but the pump this side, which you have got an oil tank in there, same as the 1200, and you have got a little dipstick hole here, let's check the level, uh, that does your auxiliary hydraulics, the multi-power, and the diff lock, all on that. On the back here, same yoke pump, same kidney pump, does your PTO and your left arms. That's it. So that end is separate to that end. There we go, the 6354.4. Slightly different. You've got an oil water cooler on here. Also that's the filler for the tank. But when you get around the other side, we've got say bigger radiator hoses on here. It's a bigger radiator to what the 1200's got. <clears throat> And so if you notice in this one, the actual block, you've got almost like ribbed reinforcement parts in the block. So this is a dot four engine. But yeah, that's your tank for your oil, which for the steering, totally dedicated circuit. <clears throat> the drive in here, different to the 1200. You've got, I'm trying to get in there, but you've got toothed like timing belts to the two pumps, two big like lay rub couplings. Then the shaft in there, you can easily, for the sake of undoing two nuts and bolts, taking it off, the shaft will close up enough to replace the belts if you have to. But this was a bit of a minefield when I uh, put it together because, as I say, the hydraulics were all over the place. So trying to work out what went where and how it worked. But we got there in the end. Uh, I did have one problem, couldn't get the multi-power to work, but I soon found the issue with that. And as I say, on the drop box, on the back here, I say there's a return pipe which supplies oil into the back bearing. On this one, because they're plumbed up differently, there's a restriction in there compared to that one, which is just like a free flow. The restriction comes in to put back pressure in the system to give you your pressure and you for your multi power to work. But anyway, thing of beauty. I'm pleased with it. I'm pleased with my workhorse. Well, I hope that's a, an insight of what's what and difference. If you've got any comments, questions, give me a shout. It's almost music without um, having music.
I hope that is uh, a useful bit of whatever um, into my passion for these red beasts. Let's say 1979, 1981. I've got a 1980 1250 as well, which is down the workshop and others waiting to do. But yeah, not a bad sight. I thought I'd better do this now while the weather's good because it might start raining soon and then it wouldn't be very good because there'd be no sunlight. So in the meantime, thanks for watching. Say, so, drop me a comment, drop me a like, hit the old like and subscribe. Um, be good to get the numbers up. Let's say, we got visitors coming, people coming up, people wanting parts. So on that note, I'm going to get this lot wrapped up and put away and then go and have a beer. So in the meantime, thanks for watching. Laters.